Hey guys, how you doing? Uncle Steph here. So, I'm recording this December 17th, 2024. What are my predictions as to what are the best programming or development technologies? What's the best stack to pursue for 2025 when it comes to jobs, when it comes to freelancing, when it comes to potential SaaS business opportunities where you build your own piece of software that you can then license out to people or sell to people in the marketplace. Let's just jump into it. Well, it's the web stack once again. It's the web stack. So the web stack consists of a few languages. You got HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Those are the key ones that you're always going to use. Then you have a bunch of competing solutions, PHP, Java, C Sharp, Python, Ruby, and there are others. So when it comes to getting a job, when it comes to freelancing, especially when it comes to mobile app development, believe it or not, the web stack is dominant uh, for many reasons. Number one, it's cross-platform. Number two, it's, uh, it's just everybody interacts with the web in some way, whether through a web browser. Well, I don't know, everybody does it through a web browser. So yeah, if you want to maximize your earning potential as a developer, then you definitely want to get into the web stack. Now, I'm not saying the web technologies are the best. I'm saying they offer the most opportunity in terms of jobs. So people who know me know that one of the things I preach is that there's no better language. There is no best language. There's only a best language or a best technology for the job at hand. Beginner developers are concerned about what language you're going to learn. And as you get more and more advanced, you realize more and more that the language is not the most important thing in the software development game. Uh, you also realize it's not the frameworks are most important. Yes, there will be jobs specifically for a particular language. So for example, there's plenty of jobs in large organizations for C-sharp and Java. There's plenty of jobs in React if you want to do React development. But what you want to do is you want to get away from thinking of yourself as a Java developer or as a React developer. You want to start thinking about being a pure developer, a developer who can use any technologies. So what will happen? What will happen as you become more and more experienced in the game? You'll find yourself using more and more technologies, more and more languages. Now, if you're a beginner, you're probably going, oh my God, I don't want to do this, so much work. Actually, it's not that way. Because what you're going to see is all the modern languages, JavaScript, PHP, Java, TypeScript, Python, and Ruby, and we can go on and on and on and on, PHP, all these languages share very, very, very many uh, similar concepts and constructs and techniques. So once you understand what an object is in C Sharp, you know what it is in JavaScript, you know what it is in Python, you know what it is in TypeScript, you know what it is in Java, etc., and so forth. Same thing, and it gets way beyond that as well. What you're going to see in the modern languages, they share maybe uh, 85 to 95 percent of the same concepts, probably more. What's different is how nuances and how they execute on these different things. But, you know, if you're a highly experienced JavaScript programmer, for example, for you to pivot to Python and to be functional as a Python developer, a couple of days maybe. I'm not saying you're going to be a master of it, but a couple of days. If you're a master developer, you're a master of all languages. This is a concept I first learned in martial arts decades and decades ago. So, we're going to go way back in time, perhaps before you were born. So I was training, I was 18 or 19 years old. And at that particular moment in time, I was training in three different styles, fighting styles at the same time. So Monday and Tuesday, excuse me, on Monday and Wednesday, I would train in one school, Tuesday and Thursday, another school. And on the weekends, I would do this other style, you know, wrestling, boxing, catch kembo, wing chun, I could go on. And one day, one of my teachers pulled me aside and said, Steph, he says, you've been training a long time. So at this point, I've been training for nine years. So I started when I was 10. And he said, the problem that you have is that you're spreading yourself too thin. 
you are learning a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. So you should be a very high level martial artist at this point after nine years. But the fact of the matter is, he says, your level is intermediate. And the reason it was intermediate is because I had spread myself too thin. So what he su suggested, what he suggested was that I would choose a particular style. So he said, choose a particular style and concentrate on that style and that will raise your whole game. When you get really, really good with whatever style you choose, what will happen is that level of skill will translate across all the other styles and all of a sudden you're going to be an advanced expert fighter. So I didn't quite understand how that would be the case. Why would learning this style here make me better than these other styles that I knew? But I figure this guy, is the, he's the teacher. He's, the, he's been doing this a lot longer than me. He must know what he's talking about. So I took his advice. I took his, his advice. I concentrated on one particular style. And sure enough, when I did do that, within a short period of time, it was a year or two, my level of ability just skyrocketed. And this uh, increase in ability translated across all styles. All of a sudden, I became really good at all these different styles. So how can that be, right? How could totally different schools, totally different styles translate uh, in that way? It's the same thing for development as well. It's the same thing with development. Well, what you discover is that there are common themes, constructs, ways of doing things across the different languages and across the different styles. So in combat arts, what makes a great fighter is timing, tactics, mental conditioning, physical conditioning, good body mechanics, and understanding of uh, the fundamental uh, grappling technique, fundamental submission techniques. If you have that, this translates across all styles. So for example, we'll talk about striking arts. If you got timing and tactics and mental and physical conditioning, whether you're a boxing, whether you're a boxing, whether you're, you are boxing, whether you are doing Muay Thai, whether you, you are doing MMA, timing, tactics, mental and physical conditioning translate 100%. Same thing in software development. When you are well-versed in the fundamentals, when you know how to write good code, when you know how to organize code, when you know uh, the basic refactorings, the basic design patterns, all these, uh, these skills and this conceptual and uh, practical understanding and capability translate across all the languages. That's it. You don't want to get caught up in the language wars. That's why I have my little Ruby joke. You don't want to get caught up in being worried about whether you're learning the right technologies because they all share a very similar vein. So let's say you decided to start with JavaScript and you decided that you don't like JavaScript at some point because of the uh, strange uh, quirks of the language, uh, because you don't like NPM, and you decide you're going to move over to Java or TypeScript because you like a strongly typed language. For you to move from JavaScript to TypeScript or from JavaScript to Java won't be too difficult, in fact. It'll be pretty easy. It will be pretty easy and not a big deal. So this is an old message. You cannot learn a wrong language. That all being said and done, when it comes to the making money, for every uh, TypeScript job, there will be probably 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 5,000 JavaScript jobs. Uh, for every, um, I don't know, Ruby job, there's probably 5,000 PHP jobs. You get the idea. So the web stack is key. Uh, that's where all the jobs are going to be, especially in freelance, small business, medium size, large business. Whereas Java, for example, is mostly large business, as an example. So there you go. That's it. I know it hasn't changed much in years. Um, every technology goes through stages. Quick evolution in the early years. I experienced it firsthand in the 90s. And then as time progresses, the technology is ma mature. And the, the rate of change flattens out. And I would argue 
since about 2012, 2014, the rate of change in uh, software development has pretty much been flat, meaning not much at all. Nothing. If like I wrote a book in 2015, uh, and I designed it, and I wrote it to, it to be evergreen. It's on the basics of web design and so on, and basic coding. You can find it in the links below. I wrote it to be evergreen, meaning I wrote it for it to last a long time. And let me tell you, it's over. It's like 10 years later almost. That book is still 100% relevant today. There is nothing in that book that I wrote that's not relevant today. That wasn't the case. If you go back into the 90s, early 2000s, even the mid-2000s, technology would change. So if you bought a book on web design or web programming, rather, in 1998, by the time 2005 came around, it was radically different radically different. Uh, but now, since, as I said, 2012, 2014, when HTML5 dom started to dominate and, and well, dominated, that was it, man. So uh, there you go. Things haven't changed since then too much, and it's not changing in 2025, that's for sure. I'm Uncle Steph. I mentor people in software development, freelancing, and soon entrepreneurship, starting a business. Everything I teach, by the way, is based on my personal experience in industry uh, going back to 1994 and actually way before that in business. So, well, a few years before that. Anyway, that's it. If you have any questions about whatever I cover in this video, please comment below. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. If you don't like the video, show your derision uh, towards me. Give me two thumbs down. If you like my hat, give me a thumbs up. And... Uh, there you go. That's it. Cheers.